Well, good morning. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, uh, and we're here as we begin the month uh, of September, which is Suicide Awareness Month, and uh, the program that we have for you here today will talk about some of the things that we intend to do as part of public education over the course of the next month. We're joined today by uh, the Chairman of the Board of Legislators, the Honorable Ben Boykin, and he has two of his colleagues with us here, Legislator Kitley Koval and Legislator Nancy Barr, who are very appreciative that the Board of Legislators joins us in this effort. They will have their own ceremonies uh, this month and their, uh, at their board meetings to, uh, to recognize the same situation. Uh, we're joined also today, and you will hear them speak, our Commissioner of the Department of Community Mental Health, Michael Orth, who's the co-chair of the Westchester Suicide Prevention Task Force, and he's also the project coordinator for Westchester Suicide Fatality Initiative. Uh, you'll hear from Lieutenant Wayne Hardy, who's the first vice president of Westchester Rockland Guardian mm -hmm. Association. And we have Hassan Bilal, who's a family member and a founding member of Mind, Body, and Spirit Community Coalition here in Westchester County. And each of them will have an important part of the story to tell. We're also joined by our Commissioner of uh, Health, uh, Dr. Sholita Amler, is with us here. We're very happy to have uh, her professional skill and ability at our fingertips to do this, and so many other people within both the administration and the legislative branch that are part of this. Um, this is uh, the beginning of back to school period of time, as I think we all understand September uh, vacation times are behind us now. And uh, this is an appropriate time to have a, uh, a suicide awareness month, a, a mental health uh, awareness period of time to remember that all of us need to uh, take care of our mental health and be alert to examples of concern, particularly among our children. This is uh, something that's difficult to do. Um, we treat mental health issues very differently than we treat physical health issues. Uh, I have uh, in my life, earlier in my life, broke my wrist and it's in a sling and somebody asked me what happened. There's no thing attached to that. There's no uh, presumption of any weakness. It's just a, a physical illness, uh, uh, something that's happened, an accident that's happened. But when we deal with people that have mental health issues, mental health crises perhaps, it, it feels sometimes uh, perhaps intrusive or judgmental. Uh, when we deal with these things, and yet they're essential to deal with. And the newspaper is filled right now with stories of police officers who uh, are taking their own lives. Uh, children, young people in high school settings, which for those of us, once we've left high school, we forget what the pressures of that are like. And they take their own lives out of frustration and fear and anger. And, and it's important for all of us, not just happenstantially, but to systematically look for those signs and to try to be helpful. Um, Mental health, mental illness in a family is, is, is something that we don't talk about. We keep that amongst ourselves. But that's exactly what we can't do. We have to try to figure out how to find the right services for the people that we love. And when a family is affected by suicide, there are no words. I have plenty of friends who've had this happen to them in the family and what it does, how, how that one action in life reverberates through a family of other individuals is incalculable. So however we can, as a governmental entity, working with other entities, not-for-profits, with uh, medical and mental health professionals in the society, how uh, we can put this higher on the list of priorities to be alert for it, to catch it in advance. And if we need any more example of that, all of the issues of shootings that we've seen around this country. Now, whether or not uh, they're done out of, a, out of an anger, there is no question that a person is not mentally right when they decide to pick up an assault weapon and kill other human beings. So we, we, have, a, we have a desperate need for this type of effort, and hopefully we'll be doing our share of this. We have a series of uh, public service announcements that will be rolled out this month. I want to congratulate our Director of Communications, Catherine Chaffee, other members of her team are here for uh, working through Carl Pagano and, and Chelsea Pagano and others to, to put these together. Uh, we'll see one of them roll out in a couple of seconds, and they'll go out through social media and other mechanisms uh, to help with the general public education on this topic. And uh, we recognize that through our many different offices, we have an office of veteran services, an office of women's services. Uh, we have the Youth Bureau, a host of different offices within Westchester County that are very targeted pressures that people, f you know, find in each of those different areas. And uh, we have representatives of all of those offices here. I see Nancy Tunis from the Office for Women and others uh, that will help us uh, target in some of these situations. I should add, by the way, we've been joined by our Deputy County Executive. The Honorable Ken Jenkins is with us. We're very happy to have Ken with us here, a former chairman of the Board of Legislators. Also, John Nona, our county attorney, has joined us. We're very happy to have him here as well. Um, as the other public service announcements roll out, they will include, in addition to children and adolescents' mental health, 
uh, the importance of supporting employee mental health in the business community, in the workplace, veterans and mental health, senior citizens and mental health, law enforcement and mental health. And our speakers will each touch on some of these themes as we go for. Uh, and I think the first thing we're going to do is to see the PSA on uh, children and adolescents' mental health, and then we'll have Commissioner Orth and some of our other speakers uh, share their thoughts with us. So uh, we'll, we'll do the PSA, and please enjoy it. And my friends on the base, you want to just come over here so you can see yourself. Everyone is on the continuum. We all have our good days and our bad days and sometimes feel down or feel uh, excited or feel a little bit anxious. Mental illness is really when it becomes something that has an impact on your life for more than a couple of weeks or months. When it starts affecting your relationships, your employment, your school, that's when it may be considered a mental illness. Kids usually act out before they talk it out. Um, all behavior has meaning for children. It's their way of communicating with us. Um, so so in younger ones, we'll see them not meeting their developmental milestones on time, perhaps. Maybe they're uh, walking, talking, potty training uh, later uh, than their peers. We'll see them having difficulty managing um, in school, uh, difficulty learning. We might see increased frequency in tantruming behavior. Um, and as they become teens, it's understandably a little trickier, right? Because there's a developmental piece where uh, teenagers are sort of trying to separate from their family and they may, you may not feel like you know them as well. I think people in general struggle with talking about their feelings, their emotions, um, perhaps as a, a sign of uh, weakness of character. Um, so uh, people are not as comfortable being in touch with their feelings. So uh, one of the things that we promote, and especially for parents in dealing with young kids, young children is to model talking about feelings and emotions and having that conversation with people who they care about or family members. There's a lot that we can do as the parents and caregivers um, of children. Uh, I always tell parents there are three T's. There's talk, teach, and team up. Um, first and foremost, don't be afraid to talk to your kids about mental health. Don't be afraid to talk to them about how they're feeling, to check in with them, to say, hey, I noticed that you used to love baseball and now you quit baseball, um, and invite them to talk to you or to someone else they trust about it. We do support that pediatricians um, or doctors, when you do your physical, ask questions about emotional wellness as well, as well. Um, asking have you ever felt depressed over the past year, um, do you feel anxious at times, so just to open the conversation uh, so people can talk about how they're feeling and what their emotions are. So now in person, in addition to him being on the screen, we have a Commissioner of uh, Community Mental Health, Michael Orth. Michael? Thank you. Talk about a bad hair day on that video. The wind was blowing, so, you know, it wasn't uh, But uh, thank you, Carl and Chelsea and Catherine, for putting the video together. Uh, we hope it'll spread out to our communities and educate people about the importance of mental health. Um, I first want to thank all of you for being here for this really important recognition of uh, National Suicide Prevention and Awareness Day. Uh, let me begin by thanking our county executive, our deputy county executive for their support, our board of legislators, uh, especially Legislator Koval, who's part of the Department of Community Mental Health uh, Community Service Board. So she is actively involved in a lot of the things we do in mental health uh, in terms of suicide prevention, alcoholism, you name it, she's part of it and has been a great support. I also have to thank our staff at DCMH, our Deputy Commissioner Joe Glazer is here, Mark Giuliano, Annette Peters, uh, Tori Shaw, Pat White, Adam Black. These are all staff members who commit so much of their time working on suicide prevention, whether it's with law enforcement, health out in the community, working with our community partners. So thank you for all you do. And we also have many leaders of uh, many agencies who help to promote suicide prevention. MHA of Westchester is here, and NAMI, the Harris Project, to name a few, Family Services of Westchester, WJCS, who lead our Youth Mental Health First Aid Initiative. So these are folks who really are committed to this cause. Our primary goal in recognizing National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month is to build awareness in our general community um, for all citizens, really recognizing mental wellness as part of, as the county executive said, of what we all strive for, just like good physical health. But ultimately, it's also about saving lives. Suicide is the 10th overall leading cause of death and second among youth ages 15 to 24. 
over 47,000 annually complete suicide, and 1.4 million have serious suicide attempts in our country. We have, all, we have seen the rates increase in the past 10 years to 20, by 27.5 percent, and that includes all age group, all genders, and New York State is no exception, uh, losing approximately 1,700 each year to suicide. Sadly, Westchester families and communities have impacted by the loss of loved ones as well due to suicide. One of the things that's important in Westchester, thanks to our Department of Health, uh, a report they did, and when our county executive took office, he had a transition committee, and the number one health concern that Westchester residents noted was depression and specifically suicide, uh, and the need for community support. 68% of those polled recognized suicide and mental health as a number one priority, followed by drugs and alcohol at, 65, at uh, 48%, and we all know the correlation between mental health substance misuse. A few months ago, Dr. Barbara Bernstein, who works at MHA of Westchester and is my co-chair of the task force, we met with a group of very special people. They were all family members who have lost a loved one due to suicide. These courageous family members spent over three hours meeting with us, talking about their experiences, about their tragedy, with the goal of helping others so they did not have to, as one member said, be part of a club no one would ever want to be a member of. Very powering experience. As a county, we have made uh, lots of uh, priorities in mental health, substance use, co-occurring disorders, and suicide prevention. It's been a top priority in our county. <coughs> I'd like to spend a few minutes sharing some of those highlights this morning while recognizing at the same time there's still much more to be done. Our Westchester County Suicide Prevention Awareness Task Force has been meeting for the past three years looking at increasing awareness, decreasing stigma, and implementing evidence-based trainings and practices with the ultimate goal of decreasing suicide. Many dedicated individuals that represent over 40 schools, colleges, agencies, advocacy organizations, veteran services, women's department, uh, and people who have lived experience have been meeting monthly to address this issue. We have several members in the audience today, and can you please stand that we can recognize you? Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your commitment. We also, and this is important as the county executive mentioned with the start of school, we also have a suicide prevention for schools regional leadership meeting. This is led by Dr. Lynn Allen, Assistant Superintendent of Putnam Northern BOCES, where we have both county mental health commissioners from Putnam and Westchester, both co-chairs of suicide prevention, and each and every one of our school districts involved in this effort to build awareness, to use evidence-based practices, to utilize youth mental health first aid so that every teacher, everybody working in the building understands the importance of this, how to recognize any triggers or any concerns, and be able to work collaboratively with the mental health system and the education system and with parents to address any concerns. Most recently, Westchester was one of only four counties in New York State to be part of a new initiative called the Suicide Fatality Review Committee. We are working with the New York State Prevention Center and Washington County, Oregon. We haven't had a field trip there yet, but we're looking forward to it. Washington County, seven, eight years ago, embarked on a suicide fatality committee, which consists of multidisciplinary members from law enforcement, medical examiner's office, mental health, and family members to not only look at ensuring co accurate and complete data is collected related to suicide by the coroner or medical examiner, but also conduct in-depth community reviews of suicide deaths looking for systemic patterns. As the numbers are rising throughout our country, their number of suicide, completed suicides have gone down significantly. We have just embarked uh, working with Oregon and New York State uh, to look at this model, to work closely with our medical examiner, who's here with us today, uh, Dr. Uh, Milanovic and Dr. Amler, who are key members of the team. I'd like to thank them for their support. Um, this is a two and a half year initiative. Um, again, looking at the data, uh, working with our public, uh, public uh, 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 police departments, law enforcement, medical examiner, and a group of us getting together, meeting with the family, and trying to pick up patterns. Some of the patterns they learned in Washington County was eviction was a high trigger and stressor for completing suicides. So what can we do with eviction prevention? Um, that's one of many opportunities that we hope to learn by using data and really targeting our interventions. Uh, so we just started this initiative a few weeks ago, but we're really excited and uh, hope it could lead to saving lives in our county. As the county executive mentioned, we are announcing mental health public awareness efforts. Uh, the county executive mentioned our hashtag, be the link, it's everyone's responsibility. Uh, I'd also like to thank our communications department for putting together materials and flyers. 
uh, as you walked in, we have a new tip sheet, uh, which is just a simple handout, which includes the hashtag. Also, why is our mental health important? This is for everyone's mental health. Also, potential warning signs and how to, how to address someone, how to talk to someone who may be struggling. Uh, quite often because of the stigma, because of our own comfort level, we don't ask that question, are you okay? How are you doing? And then once the person opens up, how can I get help? So this tip sheet is one example, that, along with the public service announcements, to really reach out to people and get their support. As the county executive men mentioned, we noticed there's some target populations who have been impacted by mental health and uh, suicide, including seniors, veterans, law enforcement, and the business community. And that's really important. Um, we have know that work productivity goes down for employees who struggle with mental health, and there hasn't been much done in this area, not only in our county, across the state, across the country. So we have Jan Fisher, who's the CEO of Nonprofit Westchester, working with us on this, along with other businesses throughout Westchester County. And obviously, mental health affects employees, but it also affects their family and loved ones, and that has an impact on productivity. So we're going to roll out a public service announcement and work closely with those businesses who want to take that first uh, venture into doing mental health training within the work site. So we'll keep you posted on that. As the county executive mentioned, we have a whole list of uh, trainings and awareness events coming up. Uh, there is a packet outside. Please help yourself. Uh, three of the, the, the highlights include uh, our Mind, Body, and Spirit Community Coalition presenting The Ripple Effect, uh, which features Kevin Hines, who as a young person uh, struggled with mental health and substance misuse and one day jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. And the one thing he'll talk about is as he was walking towards the bridge, if one person had just acknowledged my discomfort, my sadness, and had asked, how are you doing, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have jumped off the bridge. Um, he was lucky, he survived, and he's an inspirational speaker who's been to Westchester several times. And we're going to be uh, doing a viewing of his movie, The Ripple Effect. Uh, we're also happy that MHA of Westchester is hosting a community conversation, Live After Suicide, Finding Courage, Comfort, and Community After Unthinkable Loss. And it features Dr. Jennifer Ashton, who many of us know who uh, is on ABC News and Good Morning America. And that'll be September 26th. And one uh, new exciting venture we don't have a date yet for is a movie, a documentary called The Boxers of Brul, which recently featured at the Tribeca Film Festival and we hope will come to our county shortly. And this film is about a young person who lost her best friend to suicide after struggling with depression and substances. And she created a female boxing team in her honor. And it's a powerful film about resilience, strength, and courage. And we're honored to have the film's social impact coordinator with us today. I'd like to introduce Christine Wexler. And we look forward to hearing more about the movie and using it as an educational opportunity for our young people and our communities in Westchester. We also have, we're releasing our new DCMH brochure today, which is a handout. We want you to please uh, take advantage of that. Um, so lots of uh, awareness, uh, public information. Mental health, substance use, uh, suicide is a public health issue. We want to put it out there as a public health issue. So by educating our communities, our workforce, we feel we can make a difference in our county, not only helping all of our achieve mental wellness, but also saving lives. This work is truly a collaborative effort, involves many special caring people. I just want to take two seconds to acknowledge two gentlemen standing behind me who you'll hear more of from. Hassan Bailal is a member of the Mind, Body, and Spirit Community Coalition, who was part of that group when I mentioned family members sharing their experiences. He's given so much of his time to support the efforts of Westchester County. And we also have retired, I have to say retired, right? Retired uh, Wayne Hardy, who's the first vice president of Westchester Rockland Guardian Association. He's standing in for Paul Hood, who has been another community champion a former a sergeant in the police force who's really committed his last few years working on suicide prevention and mental health. So this work is not possible without other county departments, without our organizations, but also community members who live and breathe this with our families and communities on a daily basis. So thank you for being here and we appreciate all of your support. That's going to ask Wayne Hardy, who's first uh, vice president of the Westchester Rockland Guard. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner, for inviting us. Uh, Mr. County Exec, thank you for inviting us. The Guardian, Westchester Rock and Guardians Association, just to let you all know, we're uh, an organization made up of active and retired law enforcement. That's police, corrections, parole, and probation. And we spend a great deal of our time volunteering to talk to youth groups, talk to police organizations. We try to build community bonds between law enforcement and police. 
And we definitely feel that uh, mental health is a, is a serious issue. Uh, it, it needs to be addressed. Uh, the stigma needs to be taken away from it. Uh, you know, with, with our, especially hearing about the young people that are, uh, you know, attempting suicide these days and with the social media and people not talking to each other, not having that face-to-face -face conversation, that plays a big role in people, you know, in, in the mental health development of people. You know, you can do anything you want on an iPhone or, uh, or Snap or chat, and um, you don't know how that person is really feeling. And social, you know, uh, the bullying that's going on is it's, it's really, um, you know, it's taking its toll. So we, as guardians, encourage you to call us. We will come to your meetings. We will come talk to your youth, come talk to your seniors. Um, we, every year we go to the police academy. We address the, uh, the recruits at the police academy about how we can help them with their jobs. So we just want to make everyone's life, um, you know, uh, a little easier. And we'd like to do what we can to, um, you know, lower the chances of uh, people, uh, you know, attempting suicide. I look at uh, Mark Giuliano years ago when I was uh, in White Plains. I retired from the, as lieutenant there. Mark and I did a lot of work in White Plains, um, working with mental health. And uh, community mental health actually assigned a person full time to drive around with the White Plains police officer 40 hours a week. And all they did was, you know, deal with the uh, mental health issues in White Plains. And it, that was a great tool. I'm sure, you know, you can't measure how many lives you saved. Uh, you know, there's no way to measure it, but I'm sure it saved a lot of lives. And they continue to do it today, and, and I think that's one of the, you know, one of the um, a big benefit this city has. And I encourage other law enforcement agencies to follow that lead. But um, thanks again for inviting the guardians to be part of this, and we look forward to continue to play a big role. Thank you. Next, I'd like to ask uh, Hassan Bilal to uh, share some thoughts with us. My body, spirit, coalition. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So today. September 3rd is the anniversary or the, uh, the date that my daughter and my son-in-law were married. This was their wedding anniversary date. But less than a year ago, her husband, my son-in-law, completed suicide. So unfortunately, the family cannot celebrate their wedding anniversary as we would like to. He was a very beloved and very popular young man, uh, and many folks did not know, most folks, I would say, did not know that he did suffer from an underlying mental illness that he had dealt with, with many, for many years, and he had dealt with it successfully for many years. But he finally reached a point where he said that he did not want to treat it any longer, and um, things started to spiral down from there. So despite the best efforts of his family and those around him to try to keep him on the right path in terms of treating his illness, uh, he strayed away and it resulted in him completing suicide again in less than a year ago. So as a result, you know, we want to try to do as much as we can and everything that we can to make sure that this kind of situation does not happen to someone else. The only way that we can do that is to work, to get the word out, to make sure that we know, let people know that there are agencies and there are individuals and there are uh, community groups that are there to help them. Uh, we need to raise the awareness of mental health issues in our community. So as a result of that, as Commissioner Orth has men mentioned, we have formulated a uh, organization uh, of a compilation of many organizations that have come together to collaborate to, to uh, form the Mind, Body, and Spirit Community Coalition. And the Mind, Body, and Spirit Community Coalition is going to focus in on many different health issues that affect our communities. And our first endeavor is to deal with the mental health uh, crisis that we have and especially the suicide crisis that we have. So we are going to, as meant, uh, Commissioner Horth, Horth mentioned, we're going to show the film. We partnered with the Greenberg Central School District. And on September 19th at 6 p.m., we're going to show the film Ripple Effect. Um, it is an excellent film, as Commissioner Horth has mentioned, about a young man who tried to uh, complete suicide, and fortunately, he was not successful. 
So we'd like to invite everyone to come out and see this film. Once again, it's going to be on September 19th at Woodlands Middle High School, 475 Hartsdale Avenue at 6 p.m. from 6 to 9. It's a free event. We have refreshments available. And then we're going to have a panel discussion after the film um, with mental health professionals uh, and those who are qualified to, to speak to this area. We're going to have a panel discussion and uh, we want everyone that uh, would like to come out to please join us on that evening um, so that we won't continue to have this heartbreaking kind of situation. Um, I was mentioning uh, to the folks out in the room earlier that just last night I heard that uh, farmers are experiencing an epidemic of suicide. Perhaps many of you saw that. That was on the news last night um, because of the fact uh, that they cannot sell their product and they have farms that have been in their families for many years, generations, and they're afraid they're going to lose their farm. And a lot of them feel that suicide is their only way out. This is a mental health issue. And the, the gist of the, the report was that they need in their communities to have more uh, community organizations and more help in terms of mental health so that they can deal and cope with these type of problems. Life is full of problems. You're always going to have problems. Anyone that thinks you're going to go through this life and not have problems and serious problems at that, uh, you're, not, you're not living in, <laughs> in reality. But suicide is not the answer to any of our problems. So we want people to understand that. We want people to know that there are plenty of organizations, um, all of you that are here today that represent all of the mental health organizations. We want folks to know about uh, how they can reach out and get the help that they need. So thank you very much. And uh, let's make all of our programs a complete success. Thank you. We're opening up to questions from the media in a second. I do want Dr. Amler to share some thoughts, because she is our uh, health commissioner. So please. Well, good morning. As a former pediatrician, I can tell you that uh, with children, a lot of times parents fail to realize that to be healthy, it isn't just that you have a sound heart and strong muscles but that you have uh, good mental health as well because the body is the totality of both of those. And so unfortunately, I think a lot of times parents feel like mental health is something that children can just work their way through or wish their way through or just suck it up and, and go on. And the reality is that um, you wouldn't say that about other illnesses. You certainly wouldn't tell somebody who had diabetes you don't need treatment, just suck it up and you'll be fine. So we have to realize that this is an illness and it, it requires treatment and it requires the support and caring of those around the individual, of everyone involved. And I think if, if families can just learn to, you know, I think not be afraid of the fact that, you know, uh, that this exists in, in their child and seek out the support of others you can end up with a child that is a totally productive individual and lives a happy and long life. And that's all we want for any of our children is to live a happy, long life. And that is possible with the right treatment, the right assistance, the right support. And so we just have to be willing to put this in the open. The days of hiding it are gone. That doesn't help. And so we just need to be open about it and support our children, and I think we'll we'll get to the place that we need to be. And I want to thank Michael and everyone, all the speakers today, because they're helping to put the spotlight on what has been a long neglected part of medicine. So thank you. So thank you to all our speakers. Let's open it up to the press for any questions. You can direct it to any of the individuals. Uh, and then after this is over, you're welcome to interview any of them individually or any of our uh, folks here in the room that uh, you'd like to uh, to chat with. So, does anyone have a question for any of our speakers? Martin.
Well, I think I think Mike is is certainly um, Commissioner Orth is certainly better at, at me and at this topic than me. But what I would say is that I find, no matter what the topic is, if you educate people and they understand, they lose the fear. A lot of people feel like it might be contagious, like the measles. You know, if if I'm around somebody who has mental health issues, maybe I'll get mental health issues. That's not how it works. So we really just need to make people uh, more uh, more aware of what the situation is and how they can help. Because I think generally people will help as long as they know what to do. And so uh, it's kind of like traffic accidents. People don't stop because they don't know CPR. They say, I don't know what I would do. I, there's n why would I stop? So I think in this instance, we need to get everyone aware mm -hmm. of what's going on in our community and how they can be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just to add to Dr. Amler, we're, we're noticing in our younger generation, many of us who work in schools, that our, our young people understand they have a vocabulary. They're much more talking to each other about feelings, emotions. Um, so the young folks have it way ahead of us, us older people, where we still tend to struggle with our own mental health and wellness. So one of the things that we do a lot of is the Youth Mental Health First Aid training which is really a sort of the CPR of mental health. It gives adults a knowledge base, the vocabulary, um, the ability to recognize um, when a young person is struggling and ask those questions using normal language, not blaming or shaming. So part of the work we've done in Westchester, thanks to many of us in the room here, have really led that effort to work with our, our sports coaches, our teachers, our counselors, um, to get rid of some of that old vocabulary and really look at more resilience, emotions, and feelings. And many of our schools that really have embedded youth mental health per se, you see the difference. Young people are seeking help. They feel much more comfortable um, and have a shared language because the young folks, they got it. We do a lot of focus groups. Um, they teach us a lot about mental wellness and feelings and emotions. It's really providing the support uh, to those young people. Other questions? Ty? That's a good question. Any life lost is too many. In Westchester, we've remained, thanks to the medical examiner, we get most of our data. Most recently, the number for 2017 was 73. Uh, again, that number, and I can have the, the medical examiner, doctor can talk more about it. Uh, sometimes we're not exactly sure the cause of death. Was it like an accidental overdose? Uh, was it a suicide attempt? So some of the numbers, and that's why the suicide fatality committee is so important because we really look at the data. The medical examiner will give us very specific numbers. We have averaged in Westchester over the last five, six years a range between 66 and 74, 75. Primarily are middle, older white men uh, in terms of the data sets. Unfortunately, we have had young people as young as 13, 14 complete suicide. So it is, it is a challenge, it is an issue, and it's something uh, that we, we want to decrease those numbers as well. I don't know if our medical examiner wants to add anything to that. I just want to <clears throat> tell you that um, as a medical examiner, I perform my duty uh, with uh, um, cool the, um, examination of the circumstances uh, but the work we do, uh, examining dead people and uh, uh, understanding what transpired, what happened in an event, uh, also uh, is uh, work about uh, all about living. So we we we, uh, we perform uh, we we do that work uh, to benefit uh, the living to learn, and um, in fact. Um, as these events are uh, um, put together um, for our Awareness Month, I started to learn myself and reach out literally to some um, internet sources and realize that I didn't know uh, so much about the uh, 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 topic of prevention especially. One wonderful quote uh, I, can, I cannot uh, credit the author, but it's a TED talk, and at one point she says that uh, uh, 
these all efforts of, and she uh, certainly is talking about uh, important uh, uh, research findings and uh, really as um, a method which approved to asking if somebody wants to uh, think about suicide, uh, then making that uh, support and making a safe place, removing uh, uh, firearms uh, as an example. So she says the quote is, uh, the effort, the prevention efforts is to resuscitate the spirit and it's a heartbeat of hope. You know, I handle hearts and, uh, you know, uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, the human heart is, is uh, as one of professor of uh, forensics, he said, human heart is the center of the universe pulsating. Other questions from uh, any of our other friends in the media? If, uh, if there are no other questions, then we invite you to interview uh, any of these individuals or any of the other folks who are with us here uh, individually. And uh, those PSEAs of which you saw the first one, that is coming out now. There will be a series of another three or four, and they will come out uh, on social media and in other venues. And uh, hopefully over the course of this month, we'll figure out how to get a message out that can save even one life, and then all of this effort will be worthwhile. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to all of our speakers for your professional work. Thank you.